That sounded good. Brief and to the point. <laughs> oh, good afternoon, dear heart. Welcome once again to that ghastly production, Sir Graves Preserve. I am your friendly neighborhood vampire, Sir Graves Gatsby. Each Saturday this time on your TV, too, I bring you tales of the supernatural, ghost stories, monster tales, Stories to chill your blood. Tales to run fingers of fear up and down your spine. So, my dears, turn out your lights. Pull down the shades. Draw the drapes. Cuddle up in your favorite spot by the telly and glue your little eyes to your TV screen for today's tale of terror. <laughs> You will watch the movie and you will enjoy it. That is an order. Close. 
Anemic, are you still awake? Yes, Mommy. How many times have I told you not to call me Mommy? I'm your mummy. Okay, Mommy. Will you tell me a bedtime story? Oh, all right. Once upon a time, there were three bats. A papa bat, a mama bat, and a baby bat. They lived in a beautiful cemetery. And one day, they went out shopping at the blood bank. While they were gone, a little girl named Goldie Lockjaw got lost and was very, very tired. She came upon there too and went inside and fell fast asleep. When the three bats came home, the papa bat said, Someone's been sleeping in my nest. And the mama bat said, Someone's been sleeping in my nest. And the baby bat said, Someone's been sleeping in my nest and must up all the poison I think. So the three bats ate up the little girl and lived happily ever after. Now open your eyes and go to sleep. And tomorrow you can see your favorite television show, Bat Monsterson. Good night, Mommy. Good night, whatever you are. Vampire, my sweet. Oh, Drac, it's so nice to spend an evening at home. Would you care for an after-dinner drink? Yes, Vampire, my usual. Cyanide on the rocks. <laughs> Pardon me, my dear. <laughs> Remind me never to stop in at the Savoy Plasma again. I must have gotten hold of some tired blood. Oh, darling, I'm such a lucky girl. Tell me why vultures are circling above. Clammy, clammy, clammy's in love. And how does it feel when we stand hand in glove? Clammy, 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 my love. I'm inhuman too. Just like you, I fell with a thud. But how can a fellow win when dames get in his blood? Bride and groom, burnished tomb, and he. I 
was 21, 100 years old. You don't look a day over 2,000, my dear. Oh, thank you. Bride and groom. Furnished tomb. And images is I'm Walters, the greatest alter ego, and I understand my old alma mater is playing again this week. And if you don't mind, I'd like to encourage them with some vocal backing. Piano, please. <laughs> Demonstrate to them our skill, albeit they possess the might. Nonetheless, we have the will, how we will celebrate our victory. We shall invite the whole team up for tea. How jolly, hurl that spheroid down the field and fight, fight, fight. them with our prowess do oh fellow do not let the crimson down be of stout heart and true come on chaps fight for harvard's glorious name won't it be peachy if we win the game oh goody let's try not to injure them but fight 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 let's not be rough though fight 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 and do fight fiercely Well, now, I'm going to get ready for the game. Ta-ta! of human heads. But it's funny now and then how my thoughts go flashing back again to my old flame. My old flame. My my new lovers all seem so tame. They, they won't even let me strangle them. For I haven't met a girl so magnificent or elegant as my 
old flame. I, I've met so many who had fascinating ways, a fascinating gaze in their eye. I saw this eye, so I removed the other eye, that eye that kept winking and blinking at other men. It was me, I was, it, it was, it, it was. Some who took me up to the skies, but their attempts at love were only imitations of my old flame. I I can't even think of her name. Wait, wait, what was her name? Doris, Laura, Chloe, Manny, Mo, Jack. No, it couldn't have been Mo. <laughs> I, I can't stand it, I tell you. This is driving me sane. <laughs> monstrous monster of all. His name is Kong, and they call him King. You can tell why in the glance. And everything starts jumping when he goes into his dance. Oh, it's the King Kong Stump. There's no escape. Yes, it's the King Kong Stump. He just goes in, and the jungle shakes with a mighty sound when King Kong starts to monkey around. Worship him. He's their very favorite beast. And he's always guest of honor when they have a special feast. Then the jungle drums begin to play a beat they know he'll dig. And Giant Kong puts on a show that's really, really big. Oh, it's the King Kong Stump. There's no escape. Yes, it's the King Kong Stump. He just goes in. And the jungle shakes with the mighty song. When King Kong starts to monkey around. Joy would 
would be complete, dear, if you were only here. But still I keep your hand as a precious souvenir. The night you died, I cut it off. I really don't know why. For now, each time I kiss it, I get blood stains on my tie. I'm sorry now I killed you, for our love was something fine. Until they come to get me, I shall hold your hand. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. They've been hanging round the mountains all these years, a singing songs about them train wrecked engineers. They've invaded all the cities with their pretty corn fed ditties. They've got the population all in tears. Tears, the games are down from them are hills. Now they're flashing dollar bills, and the hillbillies are mountain Williams now. They shook their boots and overalls and even dropped their high yalls, and the hillbillies are mountain Williams now. Yeah, they left down home and hollered a microphone. A microphone. They, made they made a little dough on the radio. No, they live in all the big hotels and pal around among the swells. Hillbillies are Mountain Williams now. Oh, little, little, little. <laughs> they gave, they, they descended. They descended. Oh, thank you. They descended from that hunter, Daniel Boone. Daniel Boone. He's first great man. Sing a mountain tune. mountain tune. Oh, he taught it to his children. Now his great 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 grandchildren will be coming round the mountains pretty soon. Pretty soon. Oh, pretty soon. They left their good old mountain shacks and they ain't never going back. Them hillbillies are mountain Williams now. Their checkered suits and flashy ties would give their kin a big surprise. Hillbillies are mountain Williams now. They left their pals and a barefooted gal. They're buying pearls for the chorus girls. They play guitars in big hotels, play around among the swells. Hillbillies are mountain Williams now. You see, Sir Grace, I've been trying to blow up this here balloon, but I just can't do it. Okay, fellas, let's do a cha-cha-cha to end all cha-chas. I'm the shriek of agony. Your blood belongs to me. And not when you're asleep. I'll creep in your coffin that's made of pine. Oh, yeah. You'll be Mrs. Frankenstein. Yeah, here's swinging ghouls. We're gonna be. Cause I'm the 
shriek of agony. Thank you. Good morning. What a group we have here with us in this studio audience today. Some of them strange, some of them weird, all of them delightful and unusual, and we're going to be getting closer looks as the program goes along. But first, for 16 years here in the metropolitan Detroit area, every Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock, kids and adults alike sat down in front of their television sets to see what Sir Graves Ghastly was doing and what his scary movie would be this week, although really the movie became secondary. He brought us, though, The Wolfman, Frankenstein's Monster, Dracula, The Mummy, The Blob, and so many more classic horror films. And then in 1983... Sir Graves rose from the dead for the last time, until today. This morning, you're going to meet and talk with the man who spent his Saturdays sitting in a coffin and hosting that show. Please welcome Mr. Lawson Deming back to Detroit. <laughs> Lawson. Pretty it's been, good. It's been a long you time. You two, you look the same as you always uh. do. John's getting a little gray, aren't we, John? <laughs> I remember you very well at Channel 2. Yeah? I remember you coming in to do the show. Right. Where did Sir Graves Ghastly come from? Who made the character up? Well, uh, I came with Woodrow the Woodsman to begin with. Mm -hmm. If any of you remember Woodrow the Woodsman, he lived in the Enchanted Forest and he had animal friends. Freddy Gesundheit, the alley crack, who spent, talked with a German accent. <laughs> and talking to who, the great horned owl from Britain, a voracious elephant who loved peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> and I sat in the well with a puppet on either arm. So we did that for two weeks, and they decided maybe I ought to do something else. So they said, we've got a horror movie on Saturday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Could you come up with some kind of a character to host? So up came Sir Graves Ghastly. <laughs> I'm not sure lost in it. Sir Graves was born, right? That's right. Did you enjoy doing it? I'm sorry? Did you enjoy doing it? Oh, I loved it. Really how, loved it. How long? Was it 16? 16, 16 years. <laughs> Amazing. Let's look at a couple of clips. Well, before okay. we do that, though. Before we do that, just one thing. Because of the audience on here, I'm not sure everybody in the studio heard Sir Graves 
ghastly laugh. I wonder if you could. <laughs> the real thing. Okay, we are going to look at some clips now. Okay. Just watch. <laughs> oh, good afternoon, dear heart. Welcome once again to that ghastly production, Sir Graves Preserve. I am your friendly neighborhood vampire, Sir Graves Godfrey. Each Saturday this time on your TV, too, I bring you tales of the supernatural, ghost stories, monster tales, stories to chill your blood, tales to run fingers of fear up and down your spine. My old flame. My, my new lovers all seem so tame. They, they won't even let me strangle them. For I haven't met a girl so magnificent or elegant as my old flame. Tell me why our charms are circling above. Clammy, clammy, clammy is in love. <laughs> and how does it feel when we stand hand in glove? Clammy, 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 my love. Monsters, monster lords. His name is Kong, and they call him King. You can tell why in the glance. And everything's that jumper. Then he goes into his dance. Oh, it's the King Kong Stump. There's no escape. Yes, it's the King Kong Stump. He just goes in. And the jungle shakes with a mighty sound. When King Kong starts to monkey around. So, my dears, turn out your lights, pull down the shade, draw the drapes, cuddle up in your favorite spot by the telly, and glue your little eyes to your TV screen for today's tale of terror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the big signal to take a break, Lawson. You know what that's like, but I have to know right now, no commercials, how did the glob come into being? Well, you know, John, it was funny. They asked me to host these horror films, and it was the same dogs they've been running for years. For years. <laughs> and I thought, well, I just can't sit there and badmouth the movie. I've got to have something to play to. So the glob was one of the first things I developed. And I thought I'd... Uh, Invented the character. <laughs> then I discovered that I hadn't, that Paul Winchell had been doing it for years with costumes. But I didn't know how they did it, and they couldn't reverse pictures in those days. So they put me on a slant board with my knees hanging over a thing and shot me upside down. Boy, the blood really goes to your head. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just this. Much. Well, we're going to talk more about the wonderful characters invented for Sir Graves after we take a break here. We'll be right back. Okay, we are back with Sir Graves Gastly and many questions for you. Did he come every Saturday to do his show uh, performing? Every Are you talking to him? Yeah. You talking to me? To him. Okay, to him. let's find out. Lawson? Did I come every Saturday? Yes. No, I came on Friday. <laughs> on Friday? Oh! <laughs> yes, I uh, commuted uh, for 13 years. The first three years, I was with Woodrow, and we lived right next door to TV2 when it was on second. But after that, I commuted. I wore out three automobiles during that time. Mm. Mm. Does that answer it? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Where did uh, where did Sir Grace? I think we we didn't really get into it at the beginning of the show. Where did this all come from? And oh well, where did he live? And what was his past life like? Uh, Sir Graves, of course, lived about. Was born about four hundred years ago, 
and trod the boards with Will Shakespeare and got into an argument with Her Majesty one time, lost the argument because he was hanged in the Tower of London. But like a bad vaccination, it didn't quite take, so he's able to come back. And he'd been living in this country for the last 300 years or so. Uh, I remember one time, it was about four years into the show, somebody said, uh, where does the name come from? So I said, oh boy. I said, well, uh, Graves' family goes back to the Roman invasion. And the family name really was Graverio Gosliano. So when he got into show business, it became Sir Graves Gosley. <laughs> Okay, we have uh, someone here who got himself together, barely. I have a question, right? Yes, sir. Good, ask the question. I'm going to cover my eyes. Okay. Mister, uh, do you mind if I call you Sir Grace? Oh, I don't mind that at all. Okay. What did you do before you got on the TV, and what are you doing now, and are you doing anything in the near future in uh, personal appearances? That's the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> that takes care of it all. Thank you. Bye. No. <laughs> uh... I've been acting since I was a child. Grade school, high school, college, little theater, professional radio and television. And uh, that's the way you learn the business. That's how I got into it here. Okay? What am I doing now? Very happily retired. Fishing, uh, taking care of a big garden and mowing two acres of grass every couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's Halloween. You really don't have to do that much anymore, no. do you, Sir Graves? We're going to come back. We're going to learn more about your life before Sir Graves gas, and we have a lot of more questions right. from the audience. We'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, Sir Graves, <clears throat> what is your old-time uh, scary movie actor and, and the best movie that you know of? And compared to today, like Jason, he's a classic every Halloween. Well, I'll tell you, uh, my favorite actor is Vincent Price. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and my favorite movie is the old... Original Frankenstein, I think, is one of the greatest. Do you think, do you think, do you like Jason, the Halloween uh, movies? Oh, yeah, but I, I like the old ones. Do you think some of them are really too scary now? Oh, they're, they, they are bit. murder. They're Literally. <laughs> oh, there's a pun. Just too much violence. Too much violence? Absolutely, too much violence. We kind of, the, us, the old ones, we kind of... They were scary, but we you never didn't saw really the believe them. There it was wasn't all a, up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There wasn't a lot of blood. That's right. It was kind of bloodless. John? Not like Friday the 13th no. or the Chainsaw mm. Massacre. Mm. No. We have a call, and I think this is a rather special one. Hello, go ahead. You're on the air. <laughs> Hello, Gravesy baby. It's Griselda the Witch. Holy Toledo. How are you, Griselda? <laughs> no. Oh boy, good to hear you, dear. Yeah, I haven't talked to you in a long, long time. You gotta right. be careful; I might come back and turn you into a werewolf. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would imagine everybody in the studio audience knows Griselda, but what you probably don't know is that her son does one of the characters in Laurel and Hardy. That uh, he's just magnificent. Have you seen them do it? Have what? you seen the Laurel and Hardy group that does commercials? Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. He's no, The I... chubby one is Griselda's son. I'll be darned. Oh, Griselda, thank you for calling, my dear. Thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> God bless. Were you in radio for years before you get into television? Oh, boy. I started in radio in 1932 before most of you were born. Well, maybe some of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. How did you come up with the character Tilly? What was the inspiration for that? Well, I was listening, idly listening to some albums, and uh, I ran across a Joe Stafford album. Now, Joe Stafford, you know, is a fine singer, but she and her husband, Paul Weston, did 
a couple of albums where she sang off key and he played bad piano. And I thought, I got to do something here. So I dressed myself in drag and put on a wig. Away we went with Tilly Trollhouse, that gorgeous cookie. That's a play on words, incidentally. Um, now that you're in retirement, would you ever plan on acting again or starting another series? Uh, eventually, when we get out of this place where we, I don't have to spend all day working on the garden and the grass, I'd like to go back to do a uh, little theater live. There's nothing like a live audience. Thank you all. You know, didn't you... Didn't you used to get the skits together and there wouldn't be enough time, really, to do them, like to tape them, and you used to do them live? The creep, oh, well, you used to tell me uh, we usually tape the whole show beforehand. Unfortunately, it was taped Saturday morning, and sometimes we didn't get all these special effects finished, and we had to do them live on the air at 1 o'clock, wow. and that's a little scary, believe me. But I'm telling you, we had, we had a bunch of stagehands there who were magnificent. They they came up, and we never had a goof on the air. Remember Bobby Simons? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and Jerry Amazing Mears. Bobby. Yeah, amazing Bobby. Bobby Our time Simon. is gone. It's I'm, so good to see you again, Lawson. Yeah. And obviously, from the reception you got here this morning, everybody remembers with great fondness the one and only Sir Graves Gastly, as portrayed by Lawson Demick. Thank you. Thank you, Lawson. And we'll be back with some wacky magic after this. My name is Emile Franchel and I am a psychologist specializing in hypnotism. You are about to see a preview of the most fantastic advance ever to be made in the history of motion picture entertainment, called HypnoVista. It is a psychological technique whereby you, seated in the auditorium, actually become part of the action you see on the screen. <coughs> Watching this screen, look out, because soon, very soon, the most horrifying monster menace ever conceived will be oozing into this theater. Now, where do you suppose they're going? And just when it was getting good? Well, I guess they're not the first audience to leave a horror movie screaming, either from pure terror or from bad acting. But then that was always the beauty of fright pictures. You didn't go to observe the subtle application of the thespian art. You went to be scared out of your wits, to eat your popcorn and candy, while you tried to convince your buddies, or if you were lucky, your girlfriend, that you weren't really scared. You were merely shielding your eyes from the bright screen. <laughs> You went to live a waking nightmare filled with the unbelievable, the unnatural, and more often than not, the undead.
It has been established that persons who have recently died have been returning to life and committing acts of murder. A widespread investigation of reports from funeral homes, morgues, and hospitals has concluded that the unburied dead are coming back to life and seeking human victims. So now let's go to that film report. If I were surrounded by six or eight of these things, would I stand a chance with them? Well, there's no problem. If you had a gun, shoot them in the head. That's a sure way to kill them. If you don't get yourself a club or a torch, beat them or burn them. They go up pretty easy. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Kind of makes you want to go to the refreshment stand, doesn't it? I mustn't forget to get the name of their tailor. Matinee monsters were usually played by unknown actors, but while most disappeared into obscurity, some later traded their fangs for stars. Here's one you might recognize, about to have a little howl on the prairie. I saw. Did you recognize him? I'll call the police. I'll call the police! Of course, Terror didn't always have a recognizable face. In fact, sometimes it didn't have a face at all, or even a body, for that matter.
Not all horror was played with such a heavy hand. Some movies and actors invited a little <laughs> nervous laughter in between the screens. Hard place to keep clean, huh? Yes, I very seldom get down here. Just you better leave you, huh? Yes. Don't forget my hair. Come on, hurry up. Perhaps he was referring to the critics. And speaking of someone getting a big hand. But while some didn't want a hand, others could have definitely used one. Are you ready now, Bartholomew? hardly a lack of dangerous dungeons. But more often than not, the growing menace came from the sky and beyond. Must be the way that putty in my closet was formed. 
Miles, where do they come from? I don't know. If they are seeds or seed pods, they must grow someplace on a plant, probably. And somebody or something wants this duplication to take place. But when they're finished, what happens to our bodies? I don't know. When the process is completed, probably the original is destroyed or disintegrates. Scott, no, wait! I'm sorry, but I take a dim view of watching my own destruction take place. There isn't any danger until they're completely formed. We learned that last night at your house. Your blank didn't change right away. Not until you fell asleep. Miles, when the change does take place, do you suppose there's any difference? There must be. Wilma noticed it. So did little Jimmy. So did I. My father. <laughs> Jack, thank God. Jack, the whole town's been taken over by the pods. Not quite. There's still you and Becky. Miles, it would have been so much easier if you'd gone to sleep last night. Now relax. We're here to help you. You know better than that. We want us to put them. Would you like to watch them grow? No, thanks. Put them in there. There's nothing to be afraid of. We're not going to hurt you. But once you understand, you'll be grateful. Remember how Teddy and I fought against it? Well, we were wrong. You mean Teddy doesn't mind? Of course not. She feels exactly the way I do. Let us go! Look, we'll leave town. We won't come back. We can't let you go. You're dangerous to us. Don't fight it, Miles. It's no use. Sooner or later, you'll have to go to sleep. I'll wait for you in the hall. Miles, you and I are scientific men. You can understand the wonder of what's happened. I just think. Less than a month ago, Santa Mara was like any other town, people with nothing but problems. Then out of the sky came a solution. Seeds drifting through space for years took root in a farmer's field. From the seeds came pods, which had the power to reproduce themselves in the exact likeness of any form of life. So that's how it began. Out of the sky. While some nightmares assumed recognizable shapes, Others had no shape at all. Dave! Doc Allen's been killed. Doc Allen? What happened? It's over at his place. You gotta come now. Oh, wait a minute, Steve. Tell us what happened. Well, I'm trying to tell you. Now, this thing had killed the doc. Well, what was it? What happened with it, kid? Well, it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a mass that keeps getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> Two teenagers see it first, like a falling star from outer space. Boy, that was close. Hey, come on. I want to see if I can find it. An old man finds it, touches it, and this is the shocking result. From then on, there's no stopping the blob as it spreads from town to town. It's indestructible. It's indescribable. Nothing can stop it. This town is in danger. How can it be stopped? Mob hysteria sweeps one city. Before long, the nation, and then the world could fall before the blood-curdling threat of the Bob. Starring Steve McQueen and a cast of exciting young people. Meanwhile, others were engaged in a little hand-to-hand -hand combat of their own.
Of course, you went to the theater for the main feature. But almost as important were the previews of what terrors next week held in store for you. The movie trailers were often as good as the movies, and sometimes a lot better. As they informed you of your next cinematic experience in their own quiet, modestly understated way. The headlines of the world blaze the fabulous story of this monster from another age, catapulted from some vast sub ocean cavern by unprecedented volcanic action. And the headlines scream the story of the reckless skin divers who captured the monster and put it on exhibition. Hurry, hurry, hurry to be Fogo! But the headlines do not record the story of a little boy who had a curious sympathy and understanding for the fantastic creature. How big would a full grown one be? An approximate guess? The infant? The adult. That'll make it nearly 200 feet tall. Wreaking terrible vengeance against the civilization that has captured its offspring. Towering over the cities of the world as millions flee its awesome terror. Prepare! Prepare! Why are you still there? Prepare! Nothing can stop it. Defying the force of the army. The might of the Navy. Fire number one time. Even the fury of the Jets. In a crashing crescendo of sights never before beheld by human eyes, and adventures never before experienced by any man or woman. Now, what is it you need? You got some dried blood off a bat in the house? A raven will take you careening through the darkest of dangers into the ominous mystery of a master magician's evil castle. The Screaming Skull. The Screaming Skull is a motion picture magnificent in its horror. Therefore, this certificate assures burial service without cost to anyone in the audience who dies of fright while seeing The Screaming Skull. Flown a captive to a West Coast metropolis in an army cargo plane, his arrival catapults the whole city into an ocean of fear. For this colossal beast is at war with the world. Our world, a world his savage instincts can only hate. An airlift is being set up and food will be parachuted down to him. He'll be supplied with everything he needs. Get all the aircraft into the air at once. Colossal man is loose in Los Angeles. Look! Look at the giant! It's the civilized world in blood freezing horror as the immeasurable power of this colossal beast threatens a war of brutality such as we've never known. The war of the colossal beast and attack of the puppet people. the child in each of us knows. What are you talking about? Sally. 
Keller. He said that tonight... He said tonight he was going to kill us all. It only takes one of us to go for help. the fantastic fear of living in a normal world. But being dwarfed by people many times your size. Rampaging in an unsuspecting world. Living creatures from the dawn of time. What havoc will they wreak? What lives will they destroy? What depths of panic and terror will they create? Dinosaurus, the most amazing, astounding, astonishing adventure of them all, beyond anything your mind can imagine, never before seen on the screen. when the Earth passed through a storm of meteorites that transformed a strange breed of carnivorous plants known as trifids into flesh-eating, man-killing monsters. <coughs> this same awesome phenomena destroyed the sight of all who watched it, blinding almost the entire world. The pilot! Is he blind too? Blind, blind. For those who could still see, it was a world of unimaginable horror. Why shouldn't we survive? Well, in France alone, there's over 50 million people, almost every one of them blind. Paris, paralyzed by shock. London, stricken by fearsome disaster. And on all sides, triffids. It doesn't seem to have any central nervous system. Then how does it move? All plants move. And they don't usually pull themselves out of the ground and chase you. The Day of the Triffids. Starring Howard Keel, Nicole Moray, Janet Scott, Kieran Moore, in a flesh-crawling experience in terror. You want to stop watering your rhododendron, doesn't it? Mm. Well, our feature presentation is about to begin. I hope you've enjoyed our chilling little chat as much as I have. There's nothing like a good shiver to bring people closer. So why not pop a little popcorn, turn out the lights, and enjoy an eerie movie soon? Just make sure there's a hand nearby to hold. Preferably with a live body attached to it. <laughs>